Welcome to this video in which we will have a look at how to use Ansible to create and manage Linux workloads in Azure. So as you may or may not know already, on Microsoft Azure you can deploy lots of open source workloads ranging from bare bones operative systems like Linux, Ubuntu or CentOS or even Red Hat Enterprise Linux including the corresponding licenses to already installed applications on those operative systems like uh, Tomcat or um, other Hadoop, other things that you can see on the picture here and being the next step, the complete multi-tier application deployment. One example of that is, for example, the popular e-commerce website Magento. You can deploy the application completely, including backend databases, front-end application web servers. In this exercise, we will not do this though from the GUI, but we will use a, a very popular configuration management tool such as Ansible in order to do two things, to deploy those VMs and then once deployed we will use it to configure them. So um, as, a, as a footnote uh, I'm using here the Linux shell uh, native to the Windows operative system here to connect to a to a virtual machine from where I will be deploying the software. And by the way, this VM, as you can see, is hosted as well in, in Azure. So let's SSH to it. There we are. And uh, now the first thing um, I will show you is the uh, script that is used by the dynamic inventory feature from Ansible in order to run tasks against all VMs that you have deployed in a certain resource group in Azure. So you don't have to maintain static inventories, but you can uh, actually use this in order to run a certain operations against all your VMs. For example, here I'm just pinging my VMs to prove um, that Ansible can, is, is working correctly and is able to connect to them. Um, for this one, it's the first time that I connect, so I have to accept uh, that security question so that it's added to, to the known hosts file. And here we have checked that Ansible is, co is working correctly and, and can reach our Azure system. So um, now we can um, start uh, deploying the VM. We will use this uh, brief shell script. This is nothing else than the two calls I was mentioning before to Ansible. We will have a look at, at that file and it's it's actually uh, again these two calls. Uh, as you can see there's an uh, there are two Ansible playbook um, calls and uh, if you notice there's a, 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 an environment variable that we're using so that we don't have to confirm that uh, known host security option for the newly created VM. And this uh, second um, Ansible playbook call will install a couple of things in the VM. We will see later what that is. All right, so we can start and let the ball, let the ball running. So let's call uh, the new VM Ansible test 1138, for example. Uh, by the way, I'm using this name in order to create a global DNS name. So um, in, in this exercise, it, it's good that this is a, an unique name all over the, the at least the West Europe re region. As, uh, and as you can see, the Ansible playbook verifies that, that the DNS name is unique. So uh, while the script is working, now let's have a look at the playbook itself. Um, the first of the playbooks, the, uh, the one that is running currently, uh, it's deploying the VM in Microsoft Azure. So um, um, yeah, as, as you could see, the, the other script is running. It will take a while, we, so we have time to have a look at the playbook. This is a new VM web. Um, why web? Because I'm opening as well the port 80, uh, the default VM creation, the default Linux VM creation in Azure only opens port 22 for SSH, but we will see that this uh, this playbook is customized so that it opens up port 80 as well. It's only executing the local host and it's a local host that is uh, uh, calling Azure in order to perform the required operations such as creating storage, um, in this case verifying that the DNS is not already taken, if it is it will raise an exception, it will create, um, uh, as we were talking about before, the network security group with 
with port 80 open as well as what HTTP is working, it will create a NIC with an associated public IP address. The associated public IP address will have an associated um, public uh, DNS name, so that we can access it using the name and not only the, the IP address. And very importantly, so that Ansible correctly works, we deploy the public SH key uh, from our deployment server here. All right, uh, this will take a while. This video has been um, accelerated a bit so that we don't, we don't have uh, to wait for uh, the 10 minutes or the five to 10 minutes that it normally takes. And uh, now we, actually it's, it's shorter. I think it's around four minutes. We can have a look at the second one of the playbooks. So now the VM is created and uh, we can start configuring it, configuring the VM. Uh, configuring means, in this case, first installing HTTPD. We could have created a VM with uh, already uh, pre-installed HTTPD, but in this case, we wanted to demonstrate uh, uh, Ansible functionality, so, so this is uh, an example that I'm using. And um, we are deploying as well an HTML page that is available from a GitHub repository. If you go to the GUI, we can see that our VM is up and running. Um, we can verify details of that VM if, you, if you're interested. For example, I wanted to check that actually the DNS name has been correctly deployed before we try to reach our VM. Um, you could check any other details and um, that's basically it. What we could do now is to verify whether our website is up and running. You might want to, you might have to refresh your DNS cache, but in this case, you see it's working perfectly. And that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon.